Hello, listeners. If you've enjoyed these narrations, please click on that like and subscribe button. I worked in the underground archives of the Vatican and know the truth about what they're hiding. Below the buried ruins of the Vatican necropolis, there's an intricate hive system of tunnels and bunkers that was constructed for archiving purposes and shelter in the likelihood of nuclear war. I was employed in the security unit underneath St. Peter's Bascula and had access to the Vatican secrets. The secrets ranged from the skeletal remains of a non-humanoid extraterrestrial life to the third secret of Fatima, to the church's very own black book, and to ancient and advanced technologies. One of the secrets involved a machine said to be built in the 1950s. It was created by a team led by a man named Father Ernetti. He was an Italian physicist, a respected historian, and a Benedict monk. With the help of ten other scientists, Father Ernetti built the Cronus Vision with the ability to see into the past and potentially the future. Stories came out about how Ernetti and his team had used the machine and witnessed the last days of Christ, including the Last Supper and Crucifixion, that they'd witnessed first-hand speeches by Napoleon in the early 1800s and Cicero of the Roman Senate in 63 BC. But images from the Cronus Vision were leaked and conspiracies were easily debunked. What people don't know is that the Cronus Vision was a fabrication planted by the Vatican and spread to the public to misdirect attention away from any potential real leaks in the future of what they actually built. And the church's plans worked perfectly, as did the real invention. It was called the Tire Cease device and could receive audio recordings of the future. It had a series of antennas and sensors that were able to pick up frequencies and wavelengths of every kind. What I understood was it could identify and decode electromagnetic radiation left behind from past events. It was then programmed to use that information to assemble and predict future events. The data received is interpreted into the sound that were recorded at varying lengths. Similar to tuning a radio, you could twist a special knob that would focus the antennas into better clarity or even to device vision of other stations which some scientists claim were different dimensions. In security footage, I had seen the device used by priests and scientists many times over. I had learned how to turn it on, chart it up, and pinpoint the target locations. In all my years working there, I had managed to sneak into the Terracy's room and use the device three times. And each time I went 30 years further into the future but at the same location, which was Warsaw, where I was born. All three recordings I had were different, and they were the types of futures only conceivable in nightmares. The first recording was just over three minutes in length. It started slow, and then came into clarity. It was early morning, I could hear the cars, buses, horns, factories, people. It was downtown Warsaw during morning rush hour. That was for sure. Thunder began to roll in. Then, a single tornado siren erupted in the city, followed by many, many more. Sirens and alarms began to pierce out from the downtown core. There was confusion, yelling, and shouting from people. In the distance, the deep hum and heavy rumbling of gargantuan machines began to approach. A horrifying mechanism horn blared out. The confused yelling from people turned to screams of panic and horror. Explosions and gunfire were erupting from what sounded like fighter jets and aircrafts tearing across the sky towards the machines. A battle had commenced. It was chaotic, at least on the human side. Our attacks were uncoordinated and sporadic, and they weren't stopping the machines. The sound of the machines approaching continued, four-legged, one after the other. Bump, 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 never breaking pace, never slowing, never backwards, not fast, but unstoppable. The battle against them raged as the machines got to the city. An impossible loud sonic boom erupted. I assumed it was an EMP because everything on the human side went quiet, except for the humans themselves. They continued to yell and scream as the machines rolled over the city 
destroying it completely. And then the screams and yelling stopped, and there was only the machines. The machines continued on to the next city, their horrendous sounds getting quieter as they disappeared over the mountains. It was the scariest thing I'd experienced in my life at the moment, hearing those large, loud, mechanical horns blaring from miles away before even getting to the city. They weren't trying for a surprise attack. It didn't matter if they gave away their approach. You had all the time in the world to get up and leave before they got to your city. Eventually, you needed to stop, and then that's when they'd catch up, because these machines didn't stop, and they definitely don't go back. They were methodical and impossible to unbalance. It was like trying to argue with a metronome. In the end, I couldn't tell if it was an alien race with large, advanced technology in the form of heavy-engineered machines or if it was a self-aware AI system that had decided to give the human race its last dinner check. Both possibilities filled me with fear and terror. And the next time I used the device was six months later, and I targeted for sixty years ahead this time. I hoped to hear the sounds of civilization back, but I didn't, and it was even more frightening than the first. The recordings lasted for over four minutes, and there was a constant deep drone, almost like the hum of the earth, and then there were other sounds that came through, distinct and frightening but irregular and warped by some form of compression. I enhanced the recording and passed it through several filters and discovered the sounds were distorted because they were underwater. Warsaw was underwater, a lot of water. The sounds were analyzed and notified me of some frightening information. They were compressed by water and based on the pounds per square inch calculated. The audio was from the bottom of a newly formed drench, with over 10,000 feet of water above it in the now expanding Baltic Sea, which Warsaw was at the bottom of now. The strange sounds amidst the water were projected out in the waves of awful, guttural pulses from what was calculated to be massive, obscene creatures, some new forms of aquatic organisms, I would presume. After the audio had been cleaned, what I could hear was the nightmarish version of a humpback or a great blue's beautiful tones. Amidst the loud and frightening pulses were a myriad of high-pitched whistles. It sounded like the creatures were screaming at each other. The sounds got closer and erupted in all-out violence. They were thrashing and whistling, and shrieks of all kinds. All the disturbing versions of powerful underwater larynx, vocal cords, and air sacs. And then it got quiet, and the stillness of the ocean depth resumed. And that's when the recording ended. It was a full year before I brought myself back to that device for a third time. I input the details for 90 years ahead and hoped for a better future this time. What I got was something worse. This recording was over five minutes long and had a perfect connection to the time and place I'd targeted. But there was nothing to hear. No drone, no static, no atmosphere of any kind. None of the haunting cracklings of the planet's magnetic field. There was nothing to clean up or run through any filters. No pops or clicks to decipher, though I did all of that anyway, but received nothing back. The recording carried something more frightening than the bottom of the ocean. It carried the empty sound of space. The vast, dark areas between stars and planets filled with nothing. My filters couldn't detect the hums of stars or planets nearby. It appeared there was nothing at all. Everything was gone. It was a terrifying thought, that there was a point in not only our future, but likely the entire universe, where it would all just end. There would be nothing, not a void, not an abyss, just absolute nothing. 